Well, Raywan here in Tufnell Park has uh, been gathering some friends uh, to read uh, our psalm of the day. I will exalt the Lord at all times. <laughs> His praise will always be on my lips. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who has desired life, who loves many days, that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears towards their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them will be broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Well, thank you to uh, all the guys that uh, read out the psalm this morning and a big thank you to Raywin, um, who organised it, I must say, very efficiently and gave Phil lots of time to get that together. Three weeks ago, if you remember, we looked at Psalm 46. and We looked at the three R's that separate that psalm, that God is a refuge, that God is a river and God is a rest. And uh, we need to come to him as a refuge. We need to find this river. Uh, the Bible says, in fact, it says in Psalm 46, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Have you found that river? I'm going to try and find it this morning. First, we come to God as a refuge, then as a river, and then that brings us into God's rest. But the challenge is getting from where we come to God as a refuge, when we feel we really need him, and uh, when we come to him um, as a river, when we find that river. And Psalm 34 uh, shows us a little bit about how we can make that a reality. If you remember, Jesus said to, to them in uh, the book of John, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And it says that he, uh, by this he meant the Holy Spirit who had not yet been given to them. So there is a river. That's the exciting thing. The challenge is to find the experience of that river for ourselves. Psalm 34. Let's read out the first uh, verses of uh, this Psalm 34 together. We're not going to make any attempt to read the whole psalm or even to look at the whole psalm, but we're going to stay in these first few verses. Here we go. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. 
Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This morning, I want to tell you that I'm preaching to myself first. Last week, um, I was communicating over WhatsApp with an honest friend, um, just checking out how he and his wife were doing. And uh, uh, he assured me that they were very well. But then he said to me, Nick, I'm very concerned about you. He said, you've looked very stressed recently and you've lost your joy. Oh, dear. I was quite happy to uh, when I read that he was concerned about me. Um, and I look very stressed. Well, we get stressed. It's nice to, to, to know that somebody's concerned about that. Um, but that I'd lost my joy. Ouch. That was difficult. To start with, I thought, what? what? <laughs> and then I thought, well, actually, this is true, because in the last couple of days, I'd only just been saying to Joe that I needed to find God more in prayer myself. I've been so busy um, getting church online, uh, getting people connected, um, that when I went to pray, I found that my head was so full of stuff that it was very difficult to concentrate on praying. And unless we pray and communicate with God, then there is no river. So it was a it was a, a, a rebuke. And the Bible says, rebuke a wise man and he will love you. So, my friend, I love you. <laughs> um, it goes on. And it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. This is verse one of that incredible psalm. All times continually. Now, this has got to be the secret of the river in that first verse. How can we bless God all the time? Does that mean when um, I've, I'm sick? Does that mean when um, I, I've lost somebody close to me? Does that mean when I've lost my job and my income seems threatened? Because these are all very real things to people in this time. I will bless the Lord at all times. So we need to practice his praise being on our lips continually. We're going to have a look at some other people experiencing lockdown, the challenge of lockdown. And this was a couple of thousand years ago, uh, back in the book of Acts, Paul and Silas. And uh, I believe uh, we're going to get some pictures. I'm going to read this story out and just see whether how praise, this continual stream of praise is relevant in this story. Acts 16.22, the crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So how did Paul and Silas react to this lockdown? We read on. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And what was the effect of their praise? Verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. And when the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, do not harm yourself. We are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house. 
and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. So it says in another psalm, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise unto the Most High. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. We can see here that this was good for Paul. It's good for us. First of all, it's good spiritually. Paul had the choice when he was thrown into prison, he could have become depressed, he could have become despondent, he could have given up, he would have probably been um, killed as a result of the judgment, but instead he chose to praise God. You know, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. It was a choice that David made, and it was a choice that you and I have to make in the most difficult circumstances. It was good for him emotionally. Instead of being depressed, um, he was at least hopeful that something good was happening, what was going to happen. And it was good materially because something happened. The earthquake came, their chains fell off. He was released and they went on to the next town to continue their incredible ministry. Secondly, it's good for others. The prisoners were set free and they were listening to them, praising the Lord. So when uh, there was an earthquake, they made a connection between the praising and the praying and the earthquake. It was good for the jailer. He and his whole family were saved, it says. They put their trust in Jesus and they were baptized. And they obviously had some kind of experience that made them joyful. The river began in their lives. And it was good for God. It says in Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord. God is blessed by our praise. God does not need our praise, but God enjoys our fellowship and praise is the right thing to do because he is God and we are his people. He is the creator. We are the created. He is the redeemer and we are the redeemed and we are the ones who praise him. And God loves our fellowship. Everything went back to the attitude of praying and praising God. They had an attitude of gratitude. So how can we grow into these things? Thanksgiving is more than gratitude. Charles Spurgeon, that uh, great preacher, said about this psalm, not in my heart merely, but in my mouth too. You see, on uh, Thursdays, we go out in our street and we clap and applaud uh, the wonderful frontline workers. And we are grateful. We feel gratitude. But this is something different. You know, we could even feel grateful to God, but we need to express it. As Spurgeon says, not in my heart merely, but in my mouth, too. It's a good thing to give thanks verbally to God. It's more than giving thanks. It's magnifying the Lord. It goes on in that psalm. It says, let us magnify the Lord together. And so we make God greater through our praise. It's more than thanking him for what he's done. It's thanking him and praising him for who he is. Wasn't it wonderful what the teenagers shared about the good shepherd, about God being loving, about God being hope. But God is more than that, too. God is holy. God is majestic. God is mighty. God is the creator of all things. God is the savior. God is the redeemer. God is the sustainer. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. We need to form habits of praise and worship. Interestingly, this psalm, if you were able to read in Hebrew, which I can't, but I understand that this psalm is called an acrostic. And what that means is that each verse begins with a successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet, like ABC in Hebrew. And you'd think that might restrict the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But so many people have been inspired and blessed and spoken to through this wonderful psalm. And I found that good habits 
do not in any way hinder God. In fact, I find that God speaks to me personally much more than in any other way in my daily reading of the Bible. I find that as I daily read it, God speaks to me in an inspirational way. Daniel prayed to God three times a day. David, he said, I will give thanks to you. I will pray to you in the morning and in the evening I will give thanks to you. They had habits of praise. Recently, talking about this acrostic alphabet praying, uh, some of you have told you before that I go swimming a couple of times in the Cali Road and um, I, pr I pray as I go. So uh, A for every, uh, a, a letter of the alphabet for, for every length. As I'm going down the first length, God, you are adorable. You are atoning. You are affectionate. And then I come the second length. God, you are beautiful. God, you are the blessed. God, you are the creator. God, you are my deliverer. And I find as I meditate, it gives me something to think about. It's systematic, but I find that, 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 that God speaks to me and reveals himself to me in different ways as I systematically do this. So I encourage you, write down a thank you list. Write it down today. You can't think of what to thank God for. Start writing the list and you'll fi soon find that it's filling up. So let's pray, shall we? Father, we thank you. We thank you for what we've heard this morning. We thank you for touching our hearts through the songs. Thank you for who you are, that you are the wonderful creator. That you are a real God. Thank you that not only did you provide for our salvation through the cross, but you gave us the Holy Spirit. You gave us the promises of provision. You look after us, God. You equip us, Lord. Father, would you make us hungry in our search for you? Lord, would you help us to pray? Would you help us to give thanks? Would you help us to praise in Jesus' name? Amen. Thank you for listening. Somebody said that online, if you preach for more than 12 minutes, people will start to put on the kettle, however good you are or however, however good you think you are. So I hope you've not reached for the kettle, but I won't blame you if you have. <laughs>